still the crickets. And it's not getting any better. And it's all because we're not stepping up. So you'd think somebody running through the Twitter. And finally, maybe maybe my day has come. This is America. Do something. Enough is enough. As I've said for years, a target-rich environment, step in. Don't worry about it. Step in. But I'm asking you to do it a little bit more intelligently than what I've seen in the past. And that's a pretty multi-decadal past, so that's not coming with just the last week's view of the Internet. In fact, a lot of your research shouldn't really be on the Internet, unless it's from source documents. And I have no problem with directing you to governmental source documents or agency source documents or NGO source documents because they're telling you what's up. And that gives you the clues on how you get around uh, what they're doing. So, for those of you in any aftercast anywhere, now and into the future is BTWRLM330. Maybe this is a special one. I don't know. 330. Uh, that'll get you the, hopefully get you closer to maybe the content in the future if it's ever p still posted. Uh, production note, I don't know why we disconnected last week. I still haven't found out why. I was able to tune up my adapter. I think I'm getting a throughput that's maybe 30 to 50% better, but that doesn't mean, doesn't answer why I disconnected a bunch of times last week. So, again, uh, just I'll try, try and get on as quickly as possible when I notice. I appreciate the no heads up. Uh, I use the RLM, the RLM chat room because that's where the network is connected, and uh, that's the only one that I, I actually have running. I actually don't monitor it too much. It just distracts from my abilities to keep up. Uh, with, I, again, the context is lost on the internet, so I don't. I found I, I'm just not the guy to to contact to deal with a bunch of chat rooms. So I appreciate that you're all chatting amongst yourself. It's uh, encouraging to watch people working together and working through if you can. And again, just taking what I say as lead and move on with what you find for yourself. Uh, it is something that you'll choose and something that you'll have to work through on your own, and you'll find as you go that you you do and. A couple of uh, a couple of uh, comments here for that last week are uh, are saying just that, and as I've told you before, you'll find even more than what I'm talking about. You'll find more speci uh, specificity to what I'm telling you, and it it actually becomes even a clearer path than maybe it sounds like when I'm talking, and, uh, as fast as I might be uh, talking, uh, as fast as it it is to hard to maybe to keep up. My problem is I can't tell you all the reading I've done that tells me that tells me that allows me to tell you what I'm thinking, and you end up going and finding that out. So again, it's just a I try to show you how to how to go about doing this thing that, that we're finally seeing the truth of it all. It's not just statements or memes. There's a real problem in organized things that decide that they have more authority than than you do. And in fact, at least for the United States of America in the concepting of it, it really isn't that way. The, the people really do have a power. It's just that they've either lost lost that or they've forgotten it or they're just too apathetic to wield it. I mean, without getting too much into the, you're seeing a bunch of things, killings going on. Well, every day people die, and the, gun, the gun things over at the Walmarts and all that, another thing. I'm just blown away, especially in the last one in Texas, not the last one, but the, the one in Texas, where were all the like the security guards? I meant to comment to the Twitter. Why didn't the security clean up the aisle the guy came in on? When when the store can't clean up the aisle, then you have a problem. And this is getting to a point where I hope people will step up, especially in Texas, where you all want to talk about don't mess with Texas. This is coming down to where public places require public private protection for yourself. But until you rally around, rally up, and go right back to your governments and tell them you will make ordinances that you can't forbid gun possession for my self-defense because the cops have failed to protect us. They can't. They're, they're just history takers. The, the companies themselves that preclude our business, that preclude our, our, our defense, can't keep up with it. So I'm telling you how to look at this a little differently here. When the so-called authority, the property owner, can't protect you and won't, and the people that are the government can't protect you and won't, in the moment, that brings your reason, your necessity, up against whatever authority they think that they can bring to you. Now, there's going to be a contention, just don't shop there. Yeah, that's, go ahead, just don't shop there. That's the first thing. 
But when you have a society generally that's attacking itself, for whatever reason, I'm not going to let go into all the reasons why people are so triggered anymore. We've talked about it behind the woodshed all the time. There's no proof of just necessarily any one thing. It's just everything. And so that's not going to give us an answer until bunches of us jump into those plots. But we just have a response to be doing through threats that are now pervasive. We better take responsibility and we better stop being talked out of our ability to do so. Now, I am talking about the so-called Second Amendment, although it's not really that at all. It's your right to bear the arm that's sufficient to put down the threat. And we've lost that in every capacity, not just a firearm, so-called. Firearms are a very particular commercialized d d d term as well. It doesn't say firearm in the Constitution. In any rate, I, we go on and on and on. I, if you get the point of my subtle, the subtlety here about how they've done it to us, then you understand. And some of you are getting that. And another thing I want to address, someone, but actually a couple of people. It's funny how you guys come in, in little groups to have recognition. It's really nice to see. Uh, there's a, you get a sense of what I'm saying. You can't quite put your finger on, like last week I was talking about how I would be responding in this condition that we find in the so-called TSA and how to come to the mentality that you bring when you have to address that, some of you are responding that you're getting a sense of what that is. There's that. I want to confirm that, that it's not just what I'm saying, certainly. It's, it's, you have to be fluid in the moment. But there's a sense of how you approach this that you'll gain. And how will you gain it? You'll read more stuff. You'll read more of the objective basis that the uh, military government, the military, the buffoons, cockistocracy, whatever you want to put on them, whatever they're doing to diminish us and oppress us, You'll read how they're supposed to respond, and that gives you your guidance on how and where you're going to form your question. You'll corral them that way without, it's not physical, you just, you'll be doing it on the record. In fact, I was thinking, now again, this is all just suggestions to think, and in the fluid moment, you know, that phone thing being there, I know lots of people can use their thumbs, they're actually getting pretty thumb dexterous, I guess, uh, on these phones, you could be using that as a record machine, if you will, and now they're going to want to take it, so you build, my point is one of the things is you build in the, the harms, you're using that to witness on the phone, record on the phone, witness, since they're going to take it anyway, and maybe you weren't too smart enough to get rid of every information, you should have, you should still have the capacity to use it, it's a recording machine, so you should have it on, you should have it recording, and you should be working with the text and best as you can, taking down the text. Now, what is the point about all that? This is a setup for the future. It's not gonna, they're going to take it anyway, but what have you done? When you're witness, you move from the investigative reporter, if some of you have been really paying attention, you're the investigative reporter, but what does that make you? That makes you a witness to an ongoing what? If you've set it up in the proper few seconds in the beginning, you've set it up as a witness to an ongoing crime. And as soon as they start messing with your stuff that you're using, and you probably can only use one at a time, it's that's the record, the witness written or, or copied that they're tampering with evidence. You're not going to be able to stop them. The point is, so you come up with a thing that they're going to have to interfere with you, which is your another ability that you have. Once you establish as a crime and they take the thing that was the the evidence, you can claim they're tampering with evidence. Now, you've got something else. It doesn't mean it's going to stop them. No, but you can start building your list of things of all the violations they did. And when you get back to the idea and start to prove out and for yourself that the, they're not supposed to do this to so-called American citizens, and I'll be very careful, but Americans, keep that in the generic, people that were not supposed to be subjected because it's supposed to be people coming in and offshore and not natural to the place, I guess, the country, then you have them uh, in this condition in crime using their color of authority as a felony. You get that established very quickly. Now, if you're taking down notes or using the camera's recording, you're a witness, not just the investigative reporter. You've got two two hats that you start to wear here. And so I got on, got off off point, but uh, I want to add this. You're you're starting to sense that there's something more to this. There's an I, there's a general trend of how you get at this stuff, and it's just sitting you in your psyche. I want to reinforce that. That's exactly part of what's going on. There's stuff that starts generating out of your inside of your head that is not planned. That you get a sense of how you have to go, and I'm asking you to start to pay attention to that and go with it. That will be a part of the genius that starts to come out, and you don't parade this stuff. It's just what you're using as the tools and weapons that are coming to defend yourself, and maybe not so well in the beginning while they got you because they're brutes and bullies and they're criminals. But you will have, hopefully, this unending series of 
things that are done under the color of authority to interfere with the right you had, then interfere with your taking of evidence and witness uh, of the investigative reporter and the witness that Kurt's creating against the crime you've established. And if you start to understand this, you start standing on a stronger and stronger foundation and you start pushing what they're doing back and back. And Because when they attack you, you just say, well, if they want to take my stuff and they want to do the Fourth Amendment, they didn't have the right to tamper with my evidence and my ability to gather evidence is the really other thing. See, it's like mining law. You not just have the right to make a claim, you have the right to acquire claims. So I have the right to acquire information. I have a right to acquire and record the witness. At any rate, so this is, where do I get all that? I just read it, folks. Just go read the court cases, go read the things that you have to do, go read the pertinent rights that come with all the rights. All the stuff that's not written in the Constitution that you still have rights to. That's what I'm talking about. You go read for those things. Not what someone makes up, but something that you can see happens or what the system itself, the occupier, recognizes in these in these positions. Like I think we might get maybe today. We're going to get to a point where maybe uh, we talk about, not not to get too far off of this either, the Julian Assange thing. In a civil case, they were found, uh, the, the press is pretty absolute. And so this is the point. I mean, you have the right to disseminate information, and certainly if it's public knowledge anyway. And so there's no shield, there's no protection. It's how are you, how are you responding uh, to an aggression? Notwithstanding your peacefulness and you're just wanting to get through. How are you responding to a, the, an aggression under color of authority? And this seems to be one of the keys that I've found that seems to be universal at this point. And there's just not enough of you stepping up when you get a hit to, to really put that back on them. Some of you are, and you see, you see how it changes. But uh, again, I appreciate that you're thinking hard on these stuff, and it's coming to you that there's a there's a whole other thing that comes with it. I keep telling you, you won't really know about this other side. There's just things that you sense are happening, and as you think through those, more more responses come to you. And so let me move back into my tabs. Last week I got to three or something uh, on all this, and I again I appreciate that you're appreciating some of how you work through this. And I try to make this as uh, specific as I can in the general, and that's the problem. That's why I ask you to, you know, if you have something real special, maybe contact me, and, and you find, you, when you read through, you'll find the stuff I say is there. I don't know what to say. I'm not here to tell to tell stories, and I'm not tell you here to tell you actually how to do it. I'm, I'm saying that there's a way that it looks like it works when we're oppressed, and, and not because we're stupid. I mean, we can make stupid things, stupid mistakes. I'm saying when you're just kind of going through life, and then there's this authorita that steps up, how do we really address it? We're really outside of how to deal with that. And so over the last three decades, I've had to deal with that. Not because I went out, again, I guess it's a little bit of a warp for me, not because I wanted to prove I had a right to bear arms in the street and walk around free, and so I did what you call the auditing thing now. No, I, I was involved in things that the government was coming against me, and it was wrong, and I could see it pl clearly written that it was wrong. And so I, I started to work hard to figure out what that was. That's really not a life to live. I get that, and I should be free not to do other things, but that's the problem. We're not, actually. Now, we could la-la-la ourselves into believing that, and we can go along, and then in the future, maybe even skate out of it, not have too much trouble, or just take the lumpens they give us, and that's good enough. We could do all that. But it doesn't seem quite right here if we're going to have a bunch of people that are in positions of decision that they can, uh, again, be a, we want to call it be above the law. They don't aren't above the legal because they become they are the legal, they are what is legal, but they're but the law is never really applied, and we never get there. And so I've looked at it and said, well, that's an alternative reality, like this alternate consensus alternatives. That's just another alternative that they get us to buy into, and this is where challenging authority the proper way, the proper way, the more proper way, I guess I should say, the more proper way has been critical to get and understand. It just starts to separate you out, and they can't make, they can't, uh, you, these people aren't that, that aren't really that smart. They think they're smart. They think they have your, your line down, so they think they can anticipate you. And like I said, to some of you auditors, they have that, and you didn't quite figure that part out. Uh, judges will do this, too, on a more technical level. And so you have to understand how this game, uh, this game they play against us uh, to get us to buy into it works. And then you can continue to be that mobile and fluid uh, Avoidance, I guess I can say best, the avoidance. So 
because it's you're not in it, you're not of it. You're about it, maybe, without getting too semantical on all this, but you start to get this idea in your mind, well, okay, this is a different way to look at this, and giving it a bit of uh, a bit of consideration yeah there's a way to to way to keep them over there and you over here and and there's a chasm between you and that's all you have you don't have you can't walk in there all haughty like you got the got an answer because these people literally are criminals they don't want to agree to that but they're criminals they want to take their arrogant attitudes but but they're still criminals if you're if you're not doing anything you want to talk a lot here. Lots of people talk about non-aggression, and then I want to talk here talk about what the non, uh, no, no victim type thing. Yeah, when you're into those areas, consider what I'm saying. Consider what I'm saying to an extreme degree, because that's how you catch them. So you stop complaining about it and start catching them on. And so I'm gonna. I want to also now move on here. And a little note came by. I, thought, I don't know, maybe last week. Uh, just to put a notice on to people that those of us that are working behind the scenes, like the, like we do, and Maybe not so behind the scenes that we have a broadcast, but people are working to do research, and uh, I understand now he he has uh, he has gotten what he wanted. But I, there's one thing I noticed was left out, so I want to call it out here for y'all. If you can help, Clint Richardson was looking. He's starting to have a shift here, and he's got to get some stuff done his next project. And so he asked for some donations to get some particular equipment and a computer and some software, and that is that request was made but it was fulfilled very quickly so thank you for those of you that did that for him uh, this is a hard thing i understand for him to do you don't want to ask you know we don't ask for lots of much of anything but in this case he realized that there was an obstruction people donated uh, funds to him well now apparently he got enough in the very quick time but i noticed one thing that he was asking for that didn't pop up in his response you get the link reality blogger at wordpress you can go to his website there he's talking about this new project but i noticed he also needs something and i'm going to ask People who um, people bring a high caliber to this when they, if they're going to go ask uh, help uh, try to um, offer their help. He's also asking for editors on what he's doing, and I didn't know. I haven't talked with him at all. Uh, in fact, I sent a message back to try and mitigate some of the things he was talking about through another party who forwarded an information uh, to him. But if he's asking for editors, maybe if those of you that can edit, whether it's grammatical or contextual or subject matter wise. I didn't notice he didn't say he did get he got all the people that he needed. Uh, so though he says he doesn't now need the donations, which I think you need to pay attention to people who are earnest and focused and honest about what they do, attempting to bring information to people in a proper way. Keep your ears open to help them. Uh, in this case, he he got a lot of people are a lot of people did, but I noticed his edit. Uh, he didn't talk about the editors that if you can do some editing, and I don't even know if this would be even editing for video or if it's the grammatical thing. Uh, but you might want to, if you have the knack for that and you want to contribute, uh, maybe contact Clint Richardson. That is a reality blogger WordPress site. I suppose you can get there. There's also, you can continue to make donations even though he's asked that he's fulfilled his need. But uh, I noticed editors may be needed. Maybe those of you that can work, uh, can contact him and he can tell you what he might need in the context of non-monetary donations to get a pretty, what sounds to be a pretty big project out. So, I just wanted to advance that to my listeners. For those of you that are tuned in, if you can help, uh, great. I appreciate that. He, uh, he, I'm sure that uh, what he, what you did uh, for him here now to get him back into a system that it can help him is, uh, is uh, beyond. So appreciate all that. But again, as this thing gets uh, shaken, shooken out, shaken out. Vince, you got to help me. Shooken? Is that what we're going to shooken? Uh, shooken out. You shake this thing out. We got to keep together somehow and keep supporting the people that are doing the work. Uh, that bring us more of the uh, truth or the factual foundation from which we'll make our decisions. And uh, I think Clint's one of them. So, and like I said, I do, we don't, we don't talk much and we don't, I don't work with him. Uh, it just happens to be, that's the way it works. So uh, all I can do is kind of pass the word on as it was passed on to me. Another thing I want to bring up here is what we talk about behind the woodshed. Is I'm just kind of looking at what's going on. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, just again, uh, to me, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. As far as why do we keep on regurgitating the the same type of conditions without stopping any of this? Uh, like I said today, the Twitter was, uh, "This is America. Uh, do something. You know, enough is enough. Do something." I thought that was that was what I've been saying here. That's kind of like a should have been a mantra I put up on my on my. Uh, 
Twitters, and this morning I started to do that, uh, that I told you a long time ago uh, of things, and it's funny how what the people in government, whatever they want to make, uh, make put kudos on themselves or whatever, be, be calling stuff out, uh, that long since occurred and then are just kind of part of the memory hole. I always find it interesting that stuff pops up and people try to take credit for things that are long. And then who does it has always been a fascination. Uh, but things that uh, they come out, uh, people say, uh, and you, you hear it and you keep moving and no, nobody really resolves anything. Uh, and I don't know why, it just kind of strikes me. These things, Some of these things strike me, not, not, a, not deeply, but it's uh, more than other things to even comment to you here. Rand Paul condemns budget deal, declares the Tea Party dead. Just the title, folks. I just and then who did it? It was pretty fascinating. Uh, and I'll just I won't even read. It. I was going to read more, but there's no reason to read it. That's a Rand Paul condemns the budget deal, declares the Tea Party dead. Folks, I remember, uh, remember I told you years and years and years ago when they declared the Tea Party that when the Tea Party had that big the big meeting over in Washington D.C. and Dick Army got in the way. Remember he sat on the podium and he got in the way of them, oh, however about millions of people that a million people that showed up, whatever it was, it doesn't really matter. Gobs and gobs and gobs of people showed up at the steps of the of the Capitol. And Dick Army put his little podium up there and he started speaking stuff and he stopped everybody. I, what did I tell you? I said he stopped everybody that was there to go get something done from walking up the steps and going and occupying Congress. Didn't I tell you that years and years ago? I told you then that the Tea Party died. I find it amazing now that they want to even right, resurrect it to kill it and that Rand Paul does it. Because this is, again, these non-sequitur conditions that people buy into, make a point. And there's some of you that fell off the, the Tea Party thing or never got on it early on, but you had your own concept. The point is is that we're at the point where we might walk to a place and we'll gather in protest or we'll sit in our chairs in protest and that what we're looking at is deader than dead and yet we'll give any time and air to it. And it bothers me endlessly as I see around, look around social media. But at any rate, Rand Paul, the Tea Party was dead when it doesn't walk past a Dick Army's obstruction that was made and planned to be put there so that people wouldn't do the next step they ought to have, which is crawled up them steps and then occupied. Did you hear what I said? Occupied. Not the Occupy movement. You sit in Congress until they fix stuff. Like what, folks? I mean, Patriot Act, like NDAA, like the the, 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 the TARP, all that stuff. We didn't do it as a, hundreds of thousands to millions of people. We did nothing. And yet they want to keep the, the ghost of the Tea Party going, and so many people have been tied into that. Well, now it takes someone, Ron Paul, Rand, excuse me, Rand Paul, uh, in order to say it's dead. It, it, it didn't exist after that day, folks. You, anybody who thought it existed, and I was, we were dealing with people that were in those uh, those movement, the Tea Party. We tried to get people to understand what was going on in, through the mining district as well, explaining what that thing was. No one was interested at the time. They're not interested now. No, they'd rather get into the movement. They'd rather get into being told how the world is and how it really, without looking at it clearly, saying all that stuff is a setup. It's it's something for you to buy into to con, to uh, put yourself in a box. And have someone else declare it for you. And so, for those of you that were involved in the Tea Party, if you needed uh, somebody else to tell you, well, I guess it's officially uh, now the fact that Tea Party is dead because Rand Paul said so. Exclusive. FBI documents warn of conspiracy theories or new domestic terrorism threats. I found this lineage of discussion this week pretty interesting. Uh, you know, the Tea Party was a terrorist threat. At some point, everything's a terrorist threat. It seems to me the FBI is the biggest terrorist threat in this country at this point. Now, it's everything now being turned back. You're now seeing everything. All the all the stinking onion layers are coming out. The FBI documents warn of conspiracy theories or new domestic threats. So I was surprised, or not surprised. I guess you're surprised only to see it come out. I was kind of in. Uh, well, maybe it was. I was I thought it was humorous to watch this uh, story. The FBI also says the media got it wrong at the Garlic Festival shooters' white supremacy ideology, despite the IG's post. Well, if you read through this story and you look at the previous one, that conspiracy theories are a domestic terrorism threat. And where'd you hear that? Not only anywhere else, but certainly behind the woodshed. I've told you this is what's coming down. The Patriot Act told us this was happening. This is the other the other theme that went through this week. The Patriot, uh, Patriot Act uh, has explained this condition uh, since it was invoked 
the stupidity with which it was brought in so quickly and no one said anything. Uh, that's not the beginning. It's just the beginning for most of all y'all. Uh, and Hunt started taking notice uh, and kind of focus. Remember, we keep talking behind the woodshed. Uh, this was just really implementing the prior oppressions from which I continued to beginning early on to tell you about your civil, your uh, your equal rights, your civil rights, those things that are exactions of every kind. This is from that time before. It's just now making it more certain. Remember the uh, Trading with the Enemy Act. This was all part of that lineage. If you go to, again, the bottom line, go to your USC Title 50. Look at very, very, very carefully, and you're going to find the supporting note for that is uh, a banking, one of the, uh, a banking act as well, as well. I think it's 12 USC 95A. Let's see, it's tucked inside there. But it's at the end. It's at the, it's at the notes. So part of your, part of your, part of your, excuse me, the oppression is what people have said. But they just, they say it without perfecting it and without moving anything against it. Has to be, it is a fiscal slavery. Part of it. But the, uh, going back to the, this point here, the FBI documents were a conspiracy theory that a new domestic threat. So I've tried to explain to you as we've been moving through, do not do things and do not say things that can be pigeonholed into these these conditions. Do not accept titles to without challenge, properly responding and refuting or uh, doing an assertion of a challenge backwards on someone who tries to attach a title to you because this is where we're going. They're going to attempt to put every, marginalize everybody in these in these conditions. I don't know if you knew about the Carlick Festival. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I'm not paying much time on these shootings. I think they're partly set up. And it's not that they're so set up necessarily. There's some, there could be no setup at all, but the setup is in society, is in the minds of people. It's in how they've been abused. All different ways. Maybe not even, there's so much now, I don't even know if we could actually do the causation of it. But like I said, nobody at these shooting events are protecting themselves. That's on us. And that's on us. Well, there's a law against doing that. Well, let's well, go change. If that's the law and people are dying, it's a bad law. Let's go change it. So I've been telling you, you're going to have to be able to make laws that allow you to do the most simplest things to defend yourself because the system is set up to attack you and cause you to attack each other. Now, the Garlic Festival shooting happened. There's been like three or four since the Garlic Festival already. Which is so there's we're going into some uh, summertime thing here. Be careful as well. I don't dismiss them, but I put a little different thought on them all, and I pretty pretty much put the responsibility on us. Like I said, if you found out that Walmart didn't in the next one that happened, what in El Paso, when Walmart security didn't clean up the aisle, that guy came in with that guy, then you you are no longer you have noticed that they're not protecting you. You are now being able, listing those things. Uh, those those failures of derelictions on their part to invite you on their property that allow you to be subject to these these crimes gives you the license to disregard their restraints if they're going to want to do business with you. In other words, they can privatize their business. Here's, I guess, the definition so that you don't lose this one. If they privatize their public exposure, then it's not actually public. But that if they don't privatize it, then you you have and you come right off the street. But this is like, like this ingress and egress law. Then they don't have a. They're proving to you they can't protect you. The government does this all the time, but no one looks at it this way. So I'm off a point on that to try to solve, have this, solve the problem. We're responsible for us dying in the in the stores that are publicly open. And then, let's see me. How can I make a distinction on this? Walmart opens itself publicly, and I think Costco requires a membership. That's the distinction. If all these stores want to go to membership and you want to be a part of a member of a, of a store that allows a, someone to walk in and shoot you all, that's okay. But a publicly open place where, right to the street and you get to walk right in without restriction, that, that raises the, the, the obligation of the, of the property owner. And I don't see how that property owner has the right to keep you from to open the doors and, and create this threat to you. Maybe it'll take a couple lawsuits to stop that. But I would rather not have you do the lawsuit because that's in the legal system. Just make a law that you have the right to protect yourself because all of the failures of the organ of the owners, uh, the, the business owners, the property owners, the government itself fails to protect you. This was the basic rule of the Second Amendment anyway. Now, I brought that up just now, but I wouldn't use the Second Amendment in my statement because it has to do with private, private uh, protection. What what you, states you live in that didn't allow you to privately protect yourself? I don't understand y'all. 
But in places where you have open carry, well, I don't know what the question. Well, I guess most places that have it would have op open carry. It's the it's the one that have closed carry, but then you have to go get a permit. Now, for myself, just to tell you, I don't get out much. I really am really stuck to where I do and study and and resolve things. I don't do too much to get out and about. When I did, I always carried open. You wonder why? Well, because I saw this nonsense. Not that I'm afraid. Well, I guess I was really more more concerned that if that happened and I didn't have where I had the right to carry it and I couldn't respond, I'd feel bad about it. I mean, I'd I'd have I'd have a problem with not being able to respond. It's kind of like a fire. Why didn't I go run to put the fire out and save you know do whatever I had to do, save people if they needed it? Uh, that's just inside me. That's not me, not be you. But I I always open carried uh, for the most part. Now there's a rub when I had to go into downtown into the uh, state building, right? The county the county building that was always a rub. At the time I didn't know so much, and right now I don't necessarily have to go in. I just send in a, a letter, and I'm costed a little bit extra to go. It cost about the same as to travel down there. I send it. I send a letter that's return receipt requested and makes evidence. I just deal with things a little bit differently. It's more difficult. But hey, get back to the the thing. All these. Uh, Conspiracy theories uh, that the FBI now says is a threat to domestic and uh, domestic terrorism is what I told you was coming. They're now making it outwardly done, but they're not equally applying it, which was certainly stated here when the FBI is reporting uh, that the media got it wrong on the Garlic Festival to uh, to identify white supremacy ideology as part of the reason for why the the, the the kid went down. And just to just to touch that, even if you could find records. And it's funny, I just saw a picture, just as I was coming to broadcast, there's a picture. The three kids that were supposedly done it uh, with pictures, there's the three three side by side. They, they, I could not tell you the difference. I mean, the three pictures, the people that were supposedly doing the last three mass, so-called mass murders, uh, I couldn't tell you the difference between the three. And so we got a main problem. But even regardless of the supremacy of ideology, how can anybody, even if that was the case, there's an FB, uh, Facebook, Facepalm post of a white supremacy terminology manifestos. You see all the problems with that. But let's just say, how would you know that was the cause? When we have things like pharmaceuticals, we have things like psychiatrists, we have things like license, we have things uh, like, well, just uh, illicit uh, ch chemistry. Uh, that I mean, I'm talking mixables. Uh, we have all these things that are out there in the world. We have we have the question of uh, epigenetic change happening real time because of your food and what they do to it, and uh, not just what they give you in prescription, but the type of things that are okayed, giving permission without safety to exist. How about these? Uh, you know, not without getting into the vaccines. What are those doing to your mind? Epigenetic changing real time. We've talked about all this stuff. What's the cause? I I, I would be Everything is is a th conspiracy theory at that point, because see, you can't prove any of it, and yet any of it, any one of those could be a ca actual cause, not the pulling of the trigger. What led up to it to make the posts to load to get the gun? Uh, another thing is people. And I don't even know why I'm getting on this gun thing. Uh, they a lot of complaints. The I guess from people that are anti-gun. He could legally went to Nevada, this one in Garlic Festival, to come and shoot people at the Garlic Festival. Now, I tell you what, the Garlic Festival is a real peaceful place. So this is, this is, in one regard, it really is kind of a shock. But what's the complaint? If the guy could legally go to Nevada to use it, the complaint should have been, to my mind, was, well, how come everybody else didn't go to Nevada and have a self-protection appliance with them at the Garlic Festival? It was okay for that guy to have the guns, or the pair, whoever it was, it doesn't matter. How come no one there took the responsibility to protect themselves? So am I have at least a problem between how we, uh, how we walk into these, these conditions, how we allow these conditions with our uh, apathy and our inaction and our expecting others to help us, and we never take responsibility, and we blame the one who didn't pull the trigger. I'm not taking a blame away, uh, but we also don't know what caused that kid to, to do or those if it was, uh, the kid to do what they did. I, I don't know. And we no one looks into it. Again, these are all used. These are just a, a new alternative in the world for you. Your way of life is being changed through all this nonsense, uh, right or wrong, actual or not, fabricated or actual condition.
it's all being used and nobody seems to want to stand up and do even a portion of what I'm asking people to do to do it better. So the FBI says that, that uh, domestic terrorism is going to be those that advance conspiracy theories. And then it comes out and says that the media, mass, M-A-S-S-E-S, -S -S -E masses media got it wrong when they theorized the about the connection with the white supremacy conspiracy. Which means that the FBI, whether or not it wants to tell you, agrees that masses media is a terrorist. It's a domestic terror. And so there's your notice. And it's not going to do anything about it, which is accessory for the FBI. As I've said before, the FBI is probably the premier domestic terrorist, uh, from what I can tell. We got private, a personal a personal, private experience uh, with that through the through the mining district and their addressment uh, of our chairman after we sent a notice to show cause that the government uh, agent, uh, officer, officer, officers weren't weren't committing uh, treason. You can't even ask the question. That wasn't conspiracy theory, folks. That's that's law process being worked out to to can make confirmations. They don't even like that. The FBI does not want the law to be to be asserted. It is the terrorists. It's making war on the laws of the United States at every turn. And we see that where it'll say to domestic terrorism is the use of the conspiracy theories. We all know what, who they're vilifying, but I want to go ahead and apply it. Apply it. And yet they will not say that masses media is a, terrorism, is a threat, is a terrorism. And this is a little different than the right to publish. See, this is the thing. This is... This is treading on the dictum that you can't uh, yell fire in a, in, a, in a theater. Not law, and wasn't policy, but it's an idea of why, the only reason why they want to encroach upon the First Amendment. Because if you look very carefully, it's, you can do things lawfully, but you're not allowed to use those, those uh, privileges, I guess if you can say, or in, uh, unalienable or even inalienable rights uh, to an advantage to cause a crime. And that's the problem that you have to look at with this. But so anyway, the FBI says the media was wrong, and it ba the media was wrong because it said uh, it it created its own conspiracy theory relative to white supremacy. And I'm not getting into all that. That stuff. This is all just w terms and words to get everyone divided. I'm looking at whether or not we address these things and how. Who are we? We the people calling out and how. You just calling them names, or are you identifying? You make your bullet point facts of cause, uh, facts of ev of evidence to create the cause that you're going to at least allege, if not perfect, in the evidence. If for what? Not a court of law, but a court of public opinion, and be that voice out there that counters all this nonsense, even the FBI itself. So here's the, put this in a nutshell, the masses media puts a conspiracy theory together and promotes it. And the FBI has said that conspiracy theories are domestic terrorism. Should be interesting for you to put together for yourself and you start to pre present that in places, official, official places. And you don't just go blurt it out. You look for the proper state. My mind says, okay, you look for the proper place. When someone refers to the, a story in the media, and the, I don't mean to just talk, argue amongst themselves. I'm talking in a place of decision that they're going to bring in something important, like let's say gun control. Uh, they're going to bring it in. You say, but wait a minute now. You're relying on a story that was done by masses media that the FBI says is a domestic terrorist, notwithstanding it's a, it's a publisher. And so you're using the color of, you're using what the FBI has declared as the terrorism as a color of authority to interfere with our rights, whether they're in alienable or unalienable. And so here we go, here we go, we get the idea, I hope you get the idea how I approach some of this, just even to start the conversation on how do we start to address this. It's not addressing it, but it's creating the framework from which we will start to move we, I say we, that's any one of us, and doing when we, we move forward to address certain things. Stop complaining about the fact of it. I was really, I just, it's not a laughing matter, but I, it's like this sad, I said sadness that I'm laughing. I don't know. I don't know what the, what you call it. I want, look at a whole bunch of people that go into a place rightfully not feeling that there's going to be a problem, and that day many people die. And not one 
was protected. Not one. And yet they complained about the legal ability to go to Nevada. Well, if it's legal ability to go to Nevada, then why didn't everybody else do that? And I'll tell you one other thing that really kind of, it was unsaid. I don't know. I didn't see too many stories. Again, I didn't focus on a bunch of this stuff. I look at it just enough to know what's going on, take an assessment, and keep moving. i got other things I, I think is more important until more people start understanding how to address all this. Is that that garlic uh, festival is usually has cops crawling all over the place. All, all kinds of kind of cops. Not just cops. I mean, anybody it's a law in law enforcement in the government is usually crawling all over that place. How this thing even happened is pretty... I don't want to go to the point where it didn't happen. How did it even... How it got away... How the guy kid got away with it is just phenomenal. And so here's the point. When you have that much official coverage and it doesn't protect you, you now have the argument they can't and your necessity says they can't preclude you from doing so for yourself. What am I saying? I want you to go out and show you that you can carry a gun? No, I want you to be stepping up to understand how to start protecting yourself wherever you go. I'm actually having to rethink right now as I see all this. We're coming in, maybe this is the time where they were telling us it's going to happen all the time, that maybe we have to uh, gauge up now and do I now go and have no... Do I, I'm still considering at this point, no matter where I go, when do I open carry? And I do that because it, to me it doesn't bother. I carry tight to my body. Um, where I'm at, you can cover uh, part of it and be covered if it's on the belt. Because why? What have I told you about that? It's, it's legal to cover on the belt because... That's the official human uniform of the cop. In other words, you're held to the standard of a cop, the military there. And it's been deemed that occurring as a uniform on the, uh, the place that it's supposed to be creates an expectation it's there. Now, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm telling you that's how you can carry tight to your body and not really uh, advertise. Because I'm not an advertiser. I'd rather conceal, but I'm not going to go through the permit, the permission to go through it with it. So, but my consideration now is this killing is happening more and more, like they said it was, like they planned, and it's working. Now, do we do we disregard that? And I keep looking at other people being not responsible to protect their own, and uh, now I have to look at myself when I do that. Do we go everywhere now and protect ourselves? And when we find out we can't, or we're going to so-called get in trouble by some authorita, we have to turn our attention to that. And we have to bring the ordinance or we have to bring the, the notice, the policy even, that you can keep in your bag of law that protects you to be able to do that to protect yourself. Otherwise, you're a slave. You're subject to the whims of the system. And that system may be just as corrupt uh, if you think that's a question. No, that's a rhetorical hope that it's not. It's not. It could be as corrupt as it could be to want to hurt you. And I'm asking you all to reconsider how this is working. And uh, yeah, it's not going to happen to you, but that's the last thing. That, that's the thing that the the last thing through the mind of the people out of any one of these uh, WalMarts or whatever, all these stores, the restaurant you went to, the fast food joint. And, and so here's here 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 we are. We got a place where the F, uh, FBI will call uh, conspiracy theorists the, the domestic terrorists, which, which just isn't new. This is just now they're calling it, now they're going to call it out. And yet they look right at the media doing that and not not make any arrests is is a problem for you whether or not you appreciate that because you're not going to be treated with that with that uh, consideration at all are you and here we do get to it uh, the FBI uh, is stating that media is wrong when it proposes a conspiracy theory about the shooters in the garlic festival. And uh, the press does get the protection, though, when it talks about certain things. And this is what I wanted to point out. If you can situate this publication thing, this media thing, in a way that they don't have the right to do what they're doing. In fact, now you go ahead and use the FBI's absurd assertions. It's misapplied assertion as well. Unequally applied as the point to say that a conspiracy theory, someone who publishes a conspiracy theory, is not protected by the First Amendment. In fact, it's a terrorism. Now you're getting closer to going after Google and all that they're doing and everything else that's going on in the me masses media. But the United States federal court exposes Democratic Party conspiracy against Assange at WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Uh, they found that uh, Assange and WikiLeaks were publishers. They also found what a publisher can do. And it's apparently not conspiracy 
a conspiracy when it's the the facts and the truth of what was handed to you by a third party. And they recite a, a case in this. For those of you that are into this, for those of you that are being, uh, again, your publications, if a blog, you can find the connection to the blog or a video log or all this, that you all become part of the press and connect up your free speech and your right of the public to engage in all this. Again, so you have all these connections you can make. You make a list, short list. You can even put them in the whereas form. I, I kind of don't like to hear that because a lot of people do it and don't understand what they're doing in that. But you can put it in that form. It makes a nice bullet list, bullet point list of what you have available to you that's being interfered with. That uh, you, This case that was uh, done uh, southern, in the Southern District of New York, Southern District of New York, Federal District, against WikiLeaks and the founder, Julian Assange, it was uh, by the Democratic National Committee, it was dismissed with prejudice on top of it. Now, the attorneys are saying it's an important win for free speech. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see because if you see, you know the problem with Assange now. And remember, he's not being hit for being a publisher. He's being hit for, for um, uh, oh, excuse me, it just slipped my mind, uh, re relative to government uh, leaks and, uh, I mean, uh, national security condition. Uh, so don't be careful. You have to go through that as well uh, and cleave that away from this. But the point is, is when uh, when they were giving out publicly known facts and information that's been disclosed or information from third parties, you're not an accessory. And uh, there's a court case that's the, in this case. This is important to those of you that are doing blogs and blogs and, and, and all this as well. New York Times Company versus the United States. And they talk about in this link, you want to put yourself together uh, some sort of a, of a rebuttal to an assertion that you're either not or can't be protected or can be censored, I'm thinking that these kinds of things can be working against people like YouTube, people like Google, whoever. Whomever is sitting there uh, to uh, go against the press. And if the press is the shield, the shield we have to hide behind right now, then hide behind it. I don't see a problem with that. If, you're, if your caucusocracy is not recognizing all the other law, what else are you going to do? You're not in that control system. You better find yourself a place. You don't have to find every place. You just have to find the place that's that's protected. In this case, the WikiLeaks and Assange have been found to be protectable to a level a level that can't be brought back in. It's the, the, the dismissal is with prejudice. And so for those of you that are looking at all this, and this is not Assange's case. This has to do with this this other case here. Uh, that you need to start laying out the bullet points on how the authority works. Don't make them up. Of course, it says you have the right of press, but see, they've they've been they've eroded those with these lot of these rule o law. And because I and then I want to point out because I talk about this is where you're going to you understand what I just said is the thing you have to do. But understand it for those of you that have listened to me and really applying this, you know that the New York court has no jurisdiction. <laughs> I don't know why that cracks me up. So this is the way we have to go, but that, that decision is actually without, without uh, law, without the substance of law behind it. And this is the whole other problem. It's, there is no law right now. It's just this legal thing. I mean, some people think that's semantical. It's not, but that's okay. You keep listening to the, to the FBI saying one group of people are uh, claim about so-called that when they deem something a, a conspiracy theory is a terrorist and those that are in the mass media propaganda tools of the government are not, and you don't recognize that, you're, that's an, another part of this problem that you're not recognizing what I'm saying here relative to being able to parse through this thing and sitting inside the occupier's perceptions to make it through. And so this is a kind of a big deal here. I don't know how much to make it. I don't have time to really work out how it's working out. I just see the surface of some of these things. I particularly am, have not yet interested in protecting myself, let's say, as a as a publisher, as a press or whatever that ha hasn't approached me. So I haven't really looked into it. But you can bet I keep my mind and eye on this stuff and just keep it in the back of my mind. And, uh, and then go through a list of things on if this appro was to a attach to me somehow, how would I use these things? And uh, again, I say bullet point because it confuses people to do more at this point. 
If you can handle more, then do more. But if you go to pre present more than bullet point to most people, the ones that don't understand, will their eyes will roll black and they won't listen to you. They just don't get it. And those that do will use all your extra words against you. The, gov the courts themselves, the government itself, the attorneys themselves. So you got to find that uh, find that most direct route to really settle down and explain in short way, short sentences, what you have right to do in order of the perception of the occupier and then place your demand or cause or right or whatever you want to at the end of that. Now, if you want to perfect that more, you make those as attachments to a surface do a sheet, one sheet document, maybe two sheet document, you attach them. Uh, and only the one that's really interested will look anyway, but at least you've got up front on the first piece of paper or so. You have what you're saying. You have a way to, uh, as I called, but you, as I said, you have a word in your mouth. You have a word, an authority, an actual authority on a piece of paper. So the DNC tried to get around this and understand under, on, underlying all this. And the, remember the Russian, the Russian blah blah that went on around this is a Seth Rich's condition where he was the insider that saw it that didn't like. I think it was the, I think the reasoning. I never talked to him, so I don't know. This is fourth and fifth hand. He didn't like the way the Democratic Party treated Bernie Sanders, and so this information got leaked out, from what I understand. And uh, so WikiLeaks was uh, taking a third party. A piece of information that a pre publisher cannot be found in a, as an accessory, which was an interesting attack. And the court, the judge here, so-called, uh, said, and he was a Bill Clinton nominee, as I look up real quickly and see this. Uh, this is a Democratic Party uh, judge, if, if you will. Uh, he says, if you extend and open that up, you have no protection at all. And so he was, he was right. And so reason is not something I'm attacking here when I say that the judge um, it doesn't appear to have, by the statutes, doesn't have jurisdiction to make the decision. And I could be wrong if you can show, or they can show on the record. It won't be shown on the record, but if you did show me on the record, or they can show me on the record where the right of speech relative to WikiLeaks, which is not in the United States anywhere, whether uh, is within a territory of that United States District Court. And if you can show me that, then I'm in error. I'll correct that, and I'll be able to understand a little bit better. But the statutes say that there is no territory over there with which WikiLeaks was into, could be interfering, and therefore that 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 court has no, the establishment of the court has no jurisdiction, even if the judge has an Article Three commission. And we talked about this as well. So you're just looking at one big conspiracy after another. No theory. And yet, if you state it like like I just said it, they'll they'll say it's a conspiracy theory. Why I've told you to go to the black and white. I guess I'm I guess that was the thing that it just occurred to me now. Why am I even talking about that? Because if you don't go to the black and white, prep the prepare the the bullet point black and white up front of the authority to speak, they throw you in the conspiracy theory category and call you a domestic terrorist. They may do it anyway, but when you come back with the black and white, in other words, you're not just talking your opinion. Uh, the the, la the 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 next great uh, you know thing that's going to come down to sal save us all and you say wait a minute now are you calling me this uh, you're saying uh, it's a conspiracy theory that this and this and this happened well here's the law that allows me to say it and this this and this did happen now you've used the color of your authority and power to call me names and defame me in order to try and get an advantage that's unjust enrichment as well especially if you can tie money to it so I've just gone through a quick links once you uh, may or may not apply. Again, it's all hypothetical in my mind, but if I'm looking at this condition from how I've seen things approach it, I talk to you quickly in the response, it's what's just going through my mind really quickly on things I bring up, concepts, and just enrich it. We don't talk about mine. That's an equity con consideration. Go research about it. You develop the elements for it. Now you can use that in your weapons, in your shield. You're a shield or a weapon or, a, or even a stalemate, whatever. I, I don't, it all depends on what you're up to what you feel you want to get done. I can't really speak to all of that at all. I'm really handicapped a bit behind the woodshed this way, but I, again, you hear me for 10 years, I'm not, it's not because, it, it, it doesn't keep me from telling you stuff. All I can't talk to is the very specifics of any one of y'all's potential problem, or not potential, I guess it's a potential problem, even when you think you have it, because you might be able to resolve it pretty quickly. I don't know, and then it's not a problem. It was just a misframing of it. So with all this press and all this condition, the press has a power in the United States still, even in front of a democratically nominated judge, 
and go read go read what the judge says here notwithstanding the jurisdictional infirmities here again the occupier is treating us in a certain way we're going to have to speak through that i don't know I haven't had anybody else explain to me how that wouldn't how they have a better idea than what i'm coming up to tell you about it's how i've been doing things for the last well maybe over 15 years now very particularly looking at the black and white don't make up stuff within the black and white in fact while i say that i need to address something not to call you out no judgment but be careful i think a set of statutes was put up last week or week before relative to when I said go look at uh, title, what, 18 U.S.C. 241, 242, and a bunch of other statutes got put up as uh, parallel coll uh, statutes to, to, to enforce. Some of those were, uh, were good. One or at least one, I went back and looked. Uh, be careful, read very carefully on the one, and I hope I get this right, I think it was USC, 18 USC 30, uh, 35, boy, if I got that, the, the, look very carefully, i got to tell you, read very carefully the statutes and do not omit any words. Any words you omit will invalidate that if you apply it wrong. When I, when I suggest these statutes, it's not that you go write that down and now add that on a piece of paper. You go write the statute, you go to, I use the Cornell website, go look at the notes, those are really important as well. But you read the statute and read it for what it says, and then go back and see the heading and read it for it, well, how, it, how it applies. Just don't take my word for it in any one particular condition. You have to have all the elements that it says. So if you're looking at a statute that pertains to government officials, an employee, and you're not dealing with a government employee, and you're trying to assert a right for you, it won't work. And I see so many people trying to do that, and, and you're going to find out as you read more federal law, the laws aren't really, there's not many laws there that actually protect people. Those laws are there to protect the government. When you finally get the over comprehensive overview, that should rise up, and you know, I shouldn't tell you that, but I'm going to anyway. You should start saying, well, when I read it specifically, this doesn't apply. Well, where's the protection for me? When I read this specifically, it doesn't apply to me. Where's my protection? You're going to start to get the idea of what I've been talking to you about. You have to find your protections elsewhere. Doesn't mean that they're not there in the federal. I'm just saying the amount of statutes I've heard being used and go read about them aren't actually applicable the way and for the specific subject matter someone might be applying with them. And so I did see that. I wanted to call your attention. This is a real important mistake that's made. Read every word in these statutes. Make sure they apply to whom they supply to. And let me just give you one that's off the point of the uh, looking at who to target. Uh, people use this, uh, what was it, 28, is it 28 USC 3002? Mine's not working there. It's totally off of what I was thinking about. It has to do with whether well, it says that the government and the agencies and instrumentalities is a corporation. That doesn't apply in all cases. So if you look at, again, this is how you go into this statute. You look. For what it talks about, it says that the, yes, it says that the United States is a corporation, its instrumentalities are corporations, but you have to go look and see what that pertains to. And you'll realize when it pertains to a thing or two, and it omits others, then it doesn't pertain in those other places. And that's how I tell you how I was able to see it confirmed this chasm with mining law and land disposal. The corporation doesn't, per, that corporate status doesn't pertain to the antecedent grants. And in that capacity, you're not dealing with that corporation. And so you get, and that, that would be grant law as well. So it conforms in a different way to prove the specificity that I'm telling you to apply these the federal statutes. And actually, you might actually be shocked at how little protections you have. What you're looking at is a big bunch of codes that protect the government institution itself, actually. So unless you can figure out a way to fit your elements in, you won't have the doorway to open. And this is why, and this is one of the things you'll find for those of you that are looking at RICO, if you are, or how you, you can't just sue a federal employer or whatever employee for, uh, in their organized criminal syndicate for RICO. They have to go, you have to have the uh, predicate acts. And so, if you, like I keep telling you, one of them is if you don't have, like, let's say a letter going through the United States mail or a, can get it in the wire, by wire, you can't get a discussion from the government by wire. You can't even start a RICO action because the only way to get through is if they violate the mail somehow or the, the communication line somehow. So it's not about you being violated. It's about whether or not someone's unlawfully breached 
a system, an instrumentality of the government itself. And I've never really meant, made that comment before to people, but that's that's what you're looking at with these government statutes. Why I keep telling you, if you start looking at it the way I've been telling you, look inside what the occupier does to protect itself, but it's got openings. You have to fit yourself within those openings. It's the only way in. I mean, it's not even a it's not even a question. In other words, if I don't have mail fraud, and I get it real quick, I make sure I get it real quick. I don't even have ability to continue. They can violate me left and right. I've got to figure out a different remedy for that, and that gets even worse, more difficult. It, it can be there. Like I've told you, I've sued a federal employee that was not supposed to be fe sued. You're not supposed to be able to sue these federal district forest rangers in a state court. And I, there's a way to do it. You just got to figure out the nice, clear path on how to get them to violate the law, and that there's no excuse for it. It takes a little bit to do, unless in this case it was so clearly outside the law, like obstructing a highway, ingress and egress. Just obstructing it as a federal employee is no excuse for that. And so that's, but that's the only way you get these guys. If you don't do it like that, you don't. You're one of the cases that gets dismissed, like this DNC people going after a publisher. And so put that in it. Put this in your pocket. Uh, at WikiLeaks, uh, it's a publisher. It's a res, it's a re, it's a repository for information to be published. Assange is a publisher. How that affects his uh, the charges he's facing right now with the United States government going after him, maybe a little differently. But you can bring the he. I don't know why he can bring this stuff in. I don't know why they don't listen to me on these jurisdictional things. But that's also another problem I have with all these people whether or not they're sets up, setups for us. We put all this time and energy and all that stuff, and we forget to go uh, to the basics that I'm telling you about how to ex how to develop for ourselves, for each one of us, not those celebrities out there. So WikiLeaks is a publisher. Assange is a publisher. They have protections. Uh, DNC cannot sue the way they sued. Uh, they can never sue now on those on those elements. In fact, if you go read through, you see how it's done how these people make lawsuits that are not even lawsuits. They talk conjecturally instead of factually, something I'm trying to tell you over and over to stop doing. That's why I say make a short sentence on on the fact of something. Don't try to tell me a story about it. And yet, we now we also know then that we can pass third-party information where the publisher can't be hit as an accessory to accepting the information, and then they have the ability to publish. Uh, and they found these, this right to be very powerful because it it keeps an informed populace and this is the key that you want to look at as well you look don't disregard that reason the judge brings forward i'll call him a judge is a judgment the people are going to agree with it and it's good enough uh, right now we can use that point that reasoning behind it it's to inform the populace to keep the the populace educated and how it's supposed to do its business and watch its business done that's the key, the one of the cornerstones of this place you call the United States of America. And it's also a way you can attack. If you got FBI saying that conspiracy theorists are, are, are terrorism in the mass media and then comes out with a conspiracy theory that it puts on someone to defame them and disregard, uh, dis, di, misdirects people's attention, and you can put that in a political context, they're not serving the public like they're supposed to. And we get a little bit of that when you see the licensing for televisions. They have to serve the public. It's one of the, again, the cornerstones of the for the protection. So you have to understand, you got to read enough to you find this stuff and you make these lists of requirements. And when you can check all the boxes now, you start to move into the place that I've been telling you. So WikiLeaks is a place, the repository of information. People contact it. Seth Rich contacted WikiLeaks. They gave some information. I don't know the story. I'm not privy to all that. I'm only looking at what people say. I'm looking at the fact and the silence over Seth Rich's condition. Well, he had to do that quietly and anonymously. So I want to bring up another story that moved this thing, transition this thing through, to show you that there's, uh, to remind us, that whatever you might think is anonymous may not be so at some time in the future, and we really have to start paying attention to how we will move anonymous information amongst each other, hopefully, here. You start to understand this meshing of a status to protect us all. Then you're going to have, and understand that, you're going to have the ability to bring your shield up in the first point, and you'd be able to forestall or for, um, forbid an encroachment into that in the first instance. Like I say, we're, on taxes, where's the due process? If you got no no due process where they determined that you're a taxable entity, a person liable to a tax, what the tax was, make records and keep books, and where? If you never got that 
if you've never got that due process, then it can't attach type of thing. The same thing here. They try to encroach upon you and presume you're not within the shielded provisions. And now WikiLeaks and, and Julian Assange is for us disseminating our information outward. You're going to be susceptible to some of the, uh, you're going to not have the record to be susceptible to something like this where in the future uh, hackers breach the FSB contractor and expose Tor de-anonymization de project and more. A SciTech, the hack company, was working on research projects for the SFB, Russia's intelligence service. But no, I don't think this is an attack on the Russians done it. I think they're actually looking to try and de-anonymize its Tor. And so the, you read this story, it's not, it sounds scary up front. It sounds, they are working on it. But the interesting thing is that I don't think that when you read the story, what they found out was that they're not yet breaking it down. Breaking it down. What they are doing as a government is trying to break it down to get at you. And so we, those of us that are, like I tell you, I don't get out much. I don't get around. I try to keep everything as, as low key. And, and, and it, I don't know absolute encryption. I'm not that hardcore. But I try to go places where most of the stuff I do is encrypted. I, even browsing is encrypted, the, at least the HTTPS. And then inside, I don't put forms on the internet. I don't fill out stuff. Any, anyway, I try to communicate with you all through encryption, uh, like proton mail type stuff, that basic level. Uh, obviously, it's not protection if you're a target. But generally, that does, does now stay in, in the idea I told you a long time ago, that you intended it to be private, not public. That's going to be the, the one of the first statements you're going to make. And then they, they intruded without warrant. That's where you get that per little bit of protection, at least on the record, that most people don't put up. Well, you hear, see here that a SciTech was a contractor to the Russian FSB that was the National Intelligence Service for Russia. They're trying to figure out how to de-anonymize Tor traffic. What they did say is something that Tor Network Project already knows is that they built, put a bunch of nodes in that were rogue rogue servers. And I'm only bringing this up because if you, we, I think I, we're seeing some of the evidence. If you can position your, one of the places to be will be in the publication, the publisher condition, the press. And you can see in that of the case, and you'll read it, what the points are. You want to keep those close to your heart, if you will. You want to put them on a short list. And you're seeing that there wants to be an intervention against all that. That if you can set up the first part, if they in fact ever break through, you're going to still have a bit of a defense against it. If you don't, you just become the fodder that they want to make known to the world that's helpless against a government that doesn't want free speech. And I'm not focusing on Russia. The United States is doing this too. In fact, you know, there's a whole other tied dynamic going on in the United States. I really am more believing that Snow Job Snowden was more of, of a, whether he knows this or not, he was there to release a lot of these things. And that gave, if you understand how this works, the ubiquity with all the intrusion tools gave the government cover to be everywhere without anybody's ability to know that the, the government's done it. And so this is a fascinating little point to find out. FSB's trying to hack it. What does that mean impliedly? It's not yet hacked, at least from the FSB, the third-party contractor's work. And you'll read some other things that are not yet hacked. In fact, you'll see some things were looked at but not actually followed through. And so if we're going to be going into the future, we see this WikiLeaks and Assange, who was international anyway, he wasn't even on the United States. It's another conditional problem. But even so, what what the United States did represent in its district court decision here was that if you can, your intention to be connected up in private for a press to inform the public is, a, if you will, noble. It is a protected activity. I'm suggesting one thing you do is make yourself that way. Set yourself up in this world of Russian dolls, nested things. You look at the world, the elites do it just like this. I'm saying you do this in statuses. Instead of making corporations, you're making status shells. You, you eliminate some that are no good and you bring in others that are better. Again, in a world of crime, you, you only have better. You don't have perfect. Well, unless you're a government and thugs and you can chase down anybody and kill them that you want. But I, uh, we're not, I don't uh, assume that any, any of my, my listeners are doing that. So hackers reached a Russian contra uh, intelligence contractor, found that they definitely are projects that are trying to make you more known to governments. 
and you need to take that in in uh, into stride. It doesn't scare me at all. It says, okay, I'm a, relative to the other case I, or that other article I read. That's pretty interesting stuff. We get to continue to do. What I've been telling you behind the woodshed is still reliable, confirmed again and again and again. And it's not something you would fear, uh, be fearful of. It's something you take very uh, certain notice of, and you, you do certain analysis, you have very uh, honest analysis about it, and you proceed. You proceed with that intelligence. And uh, to tell you, again, uh, this dichotomy between focusing on certain conspiracy theorists and not others if they're agents of the government, and then, again, my, my observation that we live in a military consequence under a, a number of different reasons, that is not what you understand. And I want to remind you all, when you look at the Libra Code and you understand what it's telling you, and international law tells me this, international provisions, international responses, the condition that goes on in the world is such that you're not told again it's a spaghetti western you think it's a move you think you're living in a real world and this is all just a fr false front to keep your confidence and to keep you from looking behind the curtain you've all these analogies to keep you from from looking behind what the setup is and in a military occupation many layers are laid out in front of you before that you will never be able to see that it is a military occupation. And and so don't don't think you can look a few layers deep and do some research and think you found it. That's not the way that's going to work. And I know that because I've had to go where I've had to go to start to be able to see I can get in behind it. I, go, I know where behind it is. Not many people want to believe that or agree with me or not uh, or keep tuned in long enough to figure out what that is or get specific on something so we can move forward faster they would rather tune away, I suppose. That's because they're not certainly going to my Twitter account. They're certainly not going to the YouTube RLM. They're not They're not going in grand vast numbers to him running to hear what they can do to protect themselves. They're like a lot of those people at the Garlic Festival. Complain about the guy legally getting a gun in Nevada, but not going to Nevada themselves to protect themselves at the Garlic Festival, knowing it was going to happen somewhere. Anyway, intelligence. So when you see the military acting to protect it, when you see somebody protecting the military uh, to protect itself, and you, you, you know them when you see them, folks, there's another act here. Uh, notwithstanding the protections now, Intelligence Act is the current one coming. It's already been passed in the House. will protect CIA agents who commit war crimes. That was in quotes. Who commit war crimes. Whistleblower Kiriaku tells RT. In other words, this, the, there's going to be an expansion on a 1982 law that just says that will make parameters on re, that reporting on the things of the government intelligence, what the government's doing, even after the death of agents, will bring, will bring upon you woe. It tells, is to me, a, a military operation to protect itself. The security of the operation. Go read the Libra Code again. And I keep saying that in my mind because you can't, you, you don't understand how, yeah, I know it's long to read, 157 articles or whatever it was, but there's really hard to evade that thing when you start, look, or avoid it even, to when you start reading what the rules are relative to the, what's going on in the world and watching it play out. You know them when you see them. When they start protecting their soldiers even after death, they don't mean you well. Oh, yeah, they know national security, this and that and the other. I get all that. But when you look at the national security has now made you an enemy combatant, domestic terrorist, subject to indefinite detention, I think we have a different type of reality to consider. And on this, uh, we're going down a couple paragraphs in this report, whereas the 1982 law protected agents who had served abroad in preceding five years, the new provision would apply to anyone working in a classified position with agencies even after their retirement or death. The provision's language was crafted by the CIA, who claim it necessary to protect agents and foreign from foreign adversaries. That includes you. Okay? You're a foreign adversary. How, how do we know that? Well, we're just on the... I don't even know. Am I get to... Am I get, do I have it even up? I don't know where my stuff is right now. With the tabs I put up, I don't even know where the stuff is. What you hear about the military... Now we're going to put uh, surveillance balloons in the Midwest, but it's Southcom who's supposed to be looking offshore, not onshore. And they use the drug war 
I made a comment to this on the Twitter, I think. Uh, they may use the drug war to use the, to, to cover the authority to do all this using the surveillance balloons. Well, take away the drug excuse, and what do you have, folks? You got no authority. You got no authority even on the drug war. But take the drug excuse away, and you got war authority. Go to Title 50. It's over and over and over, folks. I mean, I don't know what more to tell people. But that people would rather go listen somewhere else, and they don't have to listen to me. Once you get it, go tear it up, folks. Tear it up right, so you don't get yourself in trouble. We got every day to to play the to fight the war for perpetually. You know, when we didn't, you see the kind of thing that's going on. You got balloons up in balloons in space. This is the kind of protections they're putting in to sir, protect the service, the national security fraud. It's another fraud. You can clearly, it's, uh, to my mind, it's, it seems e easily, Vince, easily constructed in order to expose it. But nobody's not really doing it. And I can say, I don't do it on the mass level, on the, on the grandiose level. We do this necessities attack inside what we do with relative to the, the subject matters we go after. Again, like in the fire policies. It's, they had necessity. they got to do. No, no, you destroy that. You can destroy that. by. It takes a little more work, but it's not. It's there because what they're doing is a crime. You just have to look clearly enough at it, critically enough at it, to find out where the disconnect was. And to, to my uh, observation experience, that disconnect is somewhere because they're always coming. Con they're a criminal. They're always going to violate something. And that's you just have to look close enough uh, to do it, or watch how they stay inside. So the military, the Southcom, is supposed to look uh, outward uh, off the coast. Again, you're all domestic terrorists. So they're looking inside, and no one challenges it. No one says, "Hey, uh, we're going to now say that's a misappropriation of funds. We're going to enjoin you from doing that." You go ahead and take your balloons off and put them out over over the over the Gulf. That's fine, but but don't bring them up into South Dakota. Or anywhere else, even misery. That's not your authority. That's not your jurisdiction. When you see that happening, first of all, and you don't stop it, why aren't? Then what is your excuse? What's your what's your complaint? And if you do try to stop it, and they come thump you down, or they give national security, then you know what you've been told is a lie. Why? You see the propaganda tool of the government called masses media, uh, giving a uh, uh, giving uh, the green light uh, to do domestic terrorism on you. And when it stops being this dumb, uh, right clear in our face, I'll, I'll have to. I'll probably have to stop talking because finally we'll have stopped it. It won't happen like this anymore. So they're giving protection to their soldiers. They do it to protect the service. That's just out of the Libra code. I mean, I, I refer to that because that's in a black and white. You can read for yourself. That predates all of us. And I do that because I found out if we do all that old stuff, that antiquated stuff, it gives us the objective basis to deal with the new alternatives that are vastly unlawful. Treasonous, even use the treason. Making war on our lifestyle, our laws. Not the rule of law, the laws. The legal makes rule of law. That's rule of law and democracy. They speak nothing to your way of life. It's an international imposition by the Bar Association and agreed to by everybody who... Who uses the, that system, that that union, that labor union, essentially a professions union, uh, for advice and counsel? And so they're putting up uh, they're putting up balloons to surveil the whole center of the United States underneath this excuse of of drug war, uh, a drug war on a, a a military agency that's supposed to be looking offshore, and no one no one actually pulls anything together even to call it out. It, it's really kind of just phenomenal to me. But they're also going to, we're going to transition it. Balloons are in the sky, apparently, uh, more. And uh, so this little story popped up. Another thing happening I find interesting. The players are still consistent. And I found, on the one hand, they just go ahead and blatantly use the war, war on drugs to turn a military inward. Uh, totally inappropriate, invalid, invalid excuse. And on the other hand, you see when they're going to do this, uh, another type of attack, through uh, the color of research, they're going to use balloons, but they're going to minimize their exposure. And so it's going to be, it, this one's actually going to be very hard. I don't even know, I couldn't find an in on this one to actually stop it. Because when you read what they're actually going to do after the headline of this, they're actually going to be doing a very small experiment. There's no, 
there's no reason for it because they have other things they could do. But this is telling you where they're going. Harvard scientists funded by Bill Gates to begin spraying particles into the sky in an experiment to dim the sun. Pretty big uh, headline. I think this is a little bit overblown for the story. And so let's not get too wild and uh, let's not let's look for what it is where the government is using a completely invalid excuse of drug war to put the military inward. This Harvard scientist is going to get funded by Bill Gates, the same guy that who says the only uh, only answer to global warming, a fraud, to impose upon the world is your death, is uh, paying for this as well. Now remember, uh, they haven't they haven't decided they, they've not admitted to actual geoengineering. That become a question to make the experiments. Who reported behind that behind the woodshed and all this? Now the report is that they're going to be spraying particles. When you read the story, they're doing a very small experiment. They're actually, I think they said only like a hundred grams of a of a chemical is going to be put in a calcium something or other in the uh, and they're going to do some sensing and all this from a uh, dropping it from a balloon. This is not spraying like they like we now. This article plays on our mind about the, the persistent contrails. If I need to say that, uh, the the they're doing they're stepping in very slowly on this thing. Remember though, they're already doing it in another way. So this is a whole lot of um, a whole lot of uh, bluster in this story. I found this the story actually to be a little bit of a problem in how it tries to promote this in trying to get people to come to attention, which they should, but not in a proper way when you read what they're going to do. But inside the story is really more the key of what's going on, who's doing it, and speaks to what I've been telling on how someone who what makes this important, how you will start to address it. According to the Na Nat Nature magazine, Lewis Bedsworth, executive director of California Strategic Growth Council. So here we have your first your, your first indication of who you're dealing with, these councils, a state agency, oh wow, there you go, there's your consensus, state agency consensus, like the Bar Association is no, no less, a council and a state agency that promotes sustainability and economic prosperity. You know, I have to interject every one of these words here, I'm going to do it, any, I don't have to, but I'm going to anyway. Sustainability is the UN agenda, this is the sustainable future they, we want, not you and I, but but them, uh, these people that are putting on an economic prosperity, I want to remind you that the Agenda 2030 says prosperity is what? Financial debt. Austerity and financial debt. That's shared prosperity is financial debt. And so that's what this uh, state agency in California is promoting. Uh, will lead the Harvard Advisory Panel. The other seven members include earth science researchers and specialists in environmental and climate law and policy. Well, climate law doesn't exist. It's this international thing. Uh, policy, again, is what they all do because, you know, that's what the legislatures do. There is no law, actually. See, this is all set up for us. And you see there's nobody else involved but the consensus people. The outcome-based process is working to be able to agree to put this uh, this experiment into the air. And it's calcium carbonate particles is going to be, they say, spray. It, it's, it's really just 100 grams or something. I don't know how they're even going to do this experiment with any legitimacy when I know if they just went and looked at all these airplanes, they could probably already have a existing an existing experiment ongoing that they could be looking at all this. So they want to diminish a little bit of this. They say these are the calcium carbonate is about 100 grams, roughly equivalent to the amount of food found, the amount found in an average bottle of off-the-shelf antacid. So you see they try to diminish what they're doing. Well, uh, they get you focused on this little thing Bill Gates is going to be paying for. it. It's all consensus stuff. It's all uh, the future we want gets you into buying into the greenhouse gas climate change nonsense. Uh, but you don't realize they've been doing it to you with these not checking into an ongoing experiment, even if it, it were persistent, legitimate persistent contrails, seems to me that that's the particulates they should have been checking all along. And I said, if they get this wrong, the problem with this thing is not the truth. The truth is fine. Let's find the truth. But if they don't, if they get the truth wrong, which we know that this climate change is a unproven hypothesis, the statistical relationships of which are what they base this thing on, which is all un unproven. It's just a bunch of numbers. It's somebody's well, hockey stick, isn't it? Michael Mann made, made climate change, made global warming. It, it didn't exist. 
but this is the thing that this goes on. What if we get that wrong? What if what, the pollutants that we put up, these particles that we're already putting up, are enough evidence to show that if it's going into a diminishing cycle, as I've told you before, they predicted what happened by, what, 2030, uh, we're going to hasten that onset. And so we're going to, we're really not doing ourselves a, a favor one way or the other. I don't even have to take a position when I see this, this nonsense story relative to all the energy that's going to go out when I see an existing uh, thing, condition already ongoing that should have been the focus of the study, then I see that we're, again, what's totally insane is the fact we're not doing that study. We're fabricating new ones and thinking that 100 grams of calcium carbonate, something that's not in the atmosphere whatsoever at all, is going to give us any, in, any, any understanding of the actual condition which I'm going to suggest to you, but don't forget it. All this stuff has all these little things in my mind that you got to be careful. We talk about, we get our mind focused. Remember, we got this anomalous magnetic field going on. To me, that's a key and a critical factor that I don't hear too much people, too many people talking about. The anomaly it appears even like the swarm, the swarm satellites give us an indication. It's not two poles, it's actually four. They're varying, they're of varying powers. And they're splitting, and they're, we're actually uh, what our our sensing devices are looking at the at the d, at the the min the mean between the two strongest poles, whatever our compass might be pointing. That if that's the case, our our field is not polar as polar as it was, and therefore it, we have anomalies in the field. It's not as organized. It's not like that nice bar magnet that we understand the. All the magnetic fields are all the same, and it's, they can act as a shield from the cosmic rays. All that's broken down. Now you probably have swirls and eddies and all kinds of stuff, circles all over all over the uh, Earth because of these, these this polar diminishment. So this story, study doesn't talk anything about that. And so there's a whole lot I told you the models just don't, uh, don't do it. So if we get this wrong, folks, we're going to hurt people. I guess is the bottom line. And Bill Gates wants to kill you. He said that out of his own way. The only factor we have here is these population needs to drop. But remember, don't lose the fact that it's based on climate change, a fraud. And the future that they want. And you're sitting as crickets, not responding to it. And here I've been going for 10 years to explain who and how and what and the persistence that's required to develop these conditions, set the record up, and then go ahead and be the obstruction to it while we also work on these people that are the infestation in our government institutions that ought to be exorcised. You heard that this council is a state agency, no different than the Bar Association. These people figured us out. They figured out our weakness in a Republican form representative government that was supposed to set up and we were supposed to be vigilant to protect against. I don't know any other answer than we were supposed to, we have, we have the responsibility to be responsible. Well, I'm a little bit amused, in a sad way, amused that everybody at the, at the, at the shootings will complain, even the one in Texas, will complain about the shooter being uh, having guns and that they'll never have one on their own to protect themselves. As if the government's there to protect you. Well, they believe that, and it doesn't happen, but they'll blame the shooter for being able to legally go do something and exploit their, their, their irresponsibility, as far as I can tell. So here we have a condition that they're, they're not going to be putting up, they're not going to be doing this big old spray project and I'm five, I find that really interesting that they're not going to be doing a big cost of jets and spraying and all this other stuff. Why? What would they have to see if they did that? They'd have to go point out, well, we got the ongoing experiment with, the, with commercial airlines, don't we? But that would expose the fact that they're probably spraying, isn't it, in the fuel. And so they can't go that way. No, they're going to do some totally, well, they're going to get you to buy into the idea and they're going to admit to geoengineering, but they're going to do, they're going to take a bunch of tums and crush it up, throw it in the atmosphere. And they'll come up with the outcome they need in order to move to a bigger thing, a bigger thing, and pretty soon, well, the Ice Age may hit. Let's put it that way. And what is going to be interesting, it may hit for France and not hit for Alaska. And I say that because I predicted we were going to get snow this year, and we didn't, but France did, and we're we're not too far away from the same place. So, just the other side of the world of it, isn't it? Right? So 
we there's no predictability to nature. We just know she's doing her thing. If I want to be politically incorrect and and name a gender, I wonder what they do with Gaia. How did they do? How did they get gender correct with Gaia? Anyway, to, so here, back to the uh, military. They they watch out. What they don't watch out when they're going to just violate the law in the military. In the case that they they got it inch into a, a, a poisoning, a public poisoning that they're doing to people uh, through Title 50 as well, and they want to get you to believe that the academia is doing something, they go 100 grams of antacid, uh, and yet you look another, uh, you know them when you see them, uh, same problem with the excuse, active duty, active duty U.S. troops, now uh, prison guards at Texas detention facility. It was reported last week the U.S. Border Patrol detention facility in Donna, Texas, had increased the role of its active duty U.S. troops previously ordered to have no contact with the migrants in the facility. Their new guidelines may result in a violation of 140-year-old law consider, considered to be the cornerstone of American civil liberties, and that particular is the uh, posse comitatus. But the point is that they're not too afraid to do it. So maybe posse comitatus is not either in effect or there's a new sheriff in town. He still knows him when you sees him. They're uh, claiming that they don't have uh, arms. That doesn't necessarily make them not a troop uh, in the military consequence. And so we start seeing the encroachment. I call this out. I'm not going to get into the detention facility, all that. Uh, you can say, well, it's at the border. Well, is it federal territory? I think not. Uh, the border may be a port. That's a certain spot. So even when you get on the land, this doesn't apply. So if they're putting troops on the ground uh, in a military capacity, even if it's observers, they're still... Well, you're going to play that game in Syria, too, right? See, the, the mirror can be done both ways. And so here's a, just, to me, just, okay, it's indicative of a condition. Are you going to agree to it or not? Don't mess with Texas. They're messing with you. And I always find that interesting. Texas was carved out particularly in that proclamation that did not end the Civil War, remember? <laughs> All this stuff to, to just keep track of. It's just kind of, it's actually kind of funny. That's why I guess I'm laughing. And it's not very funny, actually. Now, moving over to you know them when you see them and protecting their own and the protection of the system and how you you, you kind of hear things are ongoing and yet you see these, again, anomalous behaviors. And I said, take care of, uh, take cognizance of the anomalies. Uh, they've been pushing, and again, a distaste, distasteful uh, this subject matter. I've talked to you more about how I've been involved uh, with the exposure to my level to finding out that trafficking, if you will, of pedophilia, child abuse, was systemic. No different than these councils, agents, state councils and bar association, all agencies. Within the state agencies, they've used the cover of the state in order to, to commit atrocities. Uh, seven, in this time, again, when you're, you're looking at the system protecting itself, I guess is the, maybe the system, the theme here, how this kind of goes through when you see a complete disregard in a color that, that sounds plausible but not when you look at it, you see one where they know where the, if they started actually doing experiments in the sky that would, that were acknowledged that, that, that really get people to, to, uh, to take notice, but they're only, well, but we're only going to be doing a, a bottle of Tums. And then in this one, hearkening back into the news that's going through that people have been enamored with, and I mean, I know it's important, but at least, but not for myself when I've already known it's there. And I can't do anything about it, and I'm a guy to, what are we going to do about it? We can pass information around, or, 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 or we can just acknowledge that we have a problem. And unless we can do something about it, we need to focus on other things. I haven't been too interested in this, these next stories of the, uh, the pedophilia and all that, like the Epstein story. And this is important to look at, I think, in a way. Again, I'm trying to call people's attention not to look away. Take cognizance of it. It has to work its way out unless you can change something. Then get it. Then you jump in with both feet. If you can't change anything, take cognizance of it. But look at, see how the system protects itself and that it is protecting itself. A report came through. Again, the system is soldiers protecting its system. 1,700 people indicted, arrested in massive nationwide uh, human trafficking sweep. We'll get into the human thing. You know all about that. Herders here. The, the, the U.S. Department of Justice, DOJ, is cracking down on the multi-billion dollar business of human traffic in the United States. In June, 1,700 people are arrested nationwide for allegedly committing child sex and exploitation crimes as part of a nationwide DOJ initiative set up, uh, called Operation Broken Heart. Now, I want to just stop. You can go on and on and on. Now, this is all coming up at the same time with the Epstein thing, all of a sudden. 
what caught my mind is is that when you go through this story and you read very quickly who the 1700 people were I could not find any officials. I could not find anybody who was in a seated decision. And I told you to watch out for that. And that's why I went looking for it. And another story pops out. Here's how prevalent sex crimes have become. Now remember, I did my, my tried to do my documentary back in 2000. Well, I was preparing it in 2000 to 2004. That's when I got whacked. Uh, but not whacked terminally. Uh, so... I guess to our good luck, if you consider I have everything to tell you. Not necessarily not just this, but on other things. And I was finding out this was systemic then. And then we find out, you know, you just look at the Catholic Church, you want to talk about systemic. And then they got a protect, protective uh, jurisdiction as well. But here's how prevalent sex crimes have become. And I noticed, I wasn't really, in, again, I'm not interested in the, really this, the story for the story's sake. I'm looking for particular points of fact. And if you go through and look and read, Every the things that they point out, you'll realize they don't mention anybody of any official notoriety. They don't expose anybody in an office, official office. And I say that with my particular view because that's who I was focused on. It was the system who was perpetrating this and allowing the condition through its agencies, through its officers, through its employees, through the Bar Association, through the judges, through whatever conditions of check and balance that were supposed to be done, it's all laid out. It's really a fascinating cancer. Again, so they, the system puts out a story for you to consume and agree to, that they're catching these people. And in fact, nobody who's actually running the levers of this, of this machine are actually on the hook, which we go back to Epstein and, okay, that's a, maybe a, someone's on him. So he, someone's no longer, he's not in someone's favor. And that's been the only way I've seen the, anybody in a seated decision to be taken down. And how that doesn't roll out to expose the rest is an interesting threat. So, there, I mean, like I've, I've already said, organized crime over the mafia just drools over this sort of power and control. And it's pervasive. But I, I just wanted to point out, the military can protects itself from what it does. You look and see what the military does to people and abuse them in all the ways that it abuses them. And you see it here, but you don't see anybody in, in all of that that's of any note uh, caught up. And I, I, my mind stopped. I started thinking about all the things I was doing back in, over a decade ago. All the officials that were involved with that that did not get caught uh, out, called out. And so they're not here really, I mean, one of the other things, they're not here to protect your kids, they're here to protect themselves. They're here to cause, a, a, you know, here's a 1,700 people, maybe scum of the earth. The point is, that's not all that's out there. And the, I guess the Epstein thing is pointing that out, isn't it? And you see all the people with the money and the contacts, they have the ways to keep avoiding the condition for a long time. Whether or not they get out, I don't know. But now we're also hearing the Clinton, or what, Hillary Clinton, the, the DOJ, the FBI working behind the scenes to make these sweetheart deals, right? The FBI is the biggest terrorist. And it's because they're, 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 they're feigning accountability and then pointing out the, again, pointing to the wrong people that are, again, well, who cares about a conspiracy theorist anyway? They had to attach that someone might believe it and actually carry it out. But that doesn't say that's the cause. That just feeds into what I said earlier in the beginning. What could be the cause? The government's not going to point out their pharmaceutical industry. Their licensees are no good. Their doctors are no good. They're all working to feed into that. They're not going to point all that out. The FBI's not going to come out and attack us when we want to say, hey, wait a minute, you got some officers in your, in your departments of government that are committing treason. We want to confirm that, and they attack you. They're not interested. Again, this is just a military covering itself up. The military is the government it's this, in this case. It doesn't look like it. It's a false front. And many levels deep. You'll never really see it. And some of you agree with me. You've read the documents. You see how it works. I don't know if you really see what I'm saying actually either. These levels really are that deep. It, it's astonishing how, how they can, how the protected this thing is from actually seeing it. All we're really responding to is the effect. That's why I say you know them when you see them. That's just an effect. It's not that underlying deep cause that that is that thing. Anyway, so here we have the system protecting itself. 
given Epstein explains that there's some very high level, very high level people, well connected, worldly types involved that you can't get at, and then you only see 1,700 uh, low hanging fruit, and the government's touting that it's protecting you. Uh, you better look at who's saying that they're protecting you as a problem. If they don't, they're not here to protect us. They're not here to protect our kids, our little goats. So here's a little story about that that came up as we move this thing through. That's consistently the telling us the story if we would just point, pay attention. And this is not enough. Once we see this is the real thing, we then have to rethink about what that means and then step back again and say, okay, now how am I going to deal with that? And one of the answers is to step away and maybe, in this case, homeschool. But that's not even the answer either because this is systemic and then you allow it to continue when you do that too. And so this is how difficult this whole shenanigans criminality that we call government has become is. A CEO offers to pay school lunch debt so parents won't have kids stolen by CPS. The government won't let him. Now we go through, I read this story about this thing, that, that they were, were going to take your kids, you know, your little goats, you're going to confiscate them for not paying for school lunch. A businessman steps up. For whatever his reasons were, altruistic or promotion, I don't really care. Because it brings up another condition, uh, another thing that people should have stepped on, stepped up to and, and, uh, and uh, really moved against to, sh to slap down these, uh, this school that would have even threatened to do this. Remember, child services involved. We just talked about the, this is the problem I was just telling you. It's systemic. This pedophilia thing is systemic. They, they, they understand how to keep themselves, make, get you think that they're doing real good, and behind the scenes, it's the dirtiest looking thing. The, 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 you wouldn't put, you wouldn't pet a dog back in there. But somebody stepped up and said, I want to pay for all the school lunches. A millionaire CEO. To his credit, I don't. I really don't care. Tom Carmichael, I don't care what his reasons were. Lock Columbia Coffee. I even gave him the name of the Columbia-based, Philadelphia-based uh, coffee company. He stepped up, said, "I'm going to pay off these debts." And the one of these, uh, this guy Joseph Mazur, who's like this president of the district, said, "No, we're not going to let you do it." And he had his own reasons. I wanted to point out something about Philadelphia and abuse. Remember, that's where the problem with uh, Sandusky, I think, was, wasn't it? In that area? And those judges? And the youth corps? And all that that I told you, watch out, at those the universities of Penn State or whatever? Am I, am I got the wrong state even? I mean, is this all the same stuff? That they, this is an abusive place, this, this area. And it jumped over to the UK. This is all I told you this years and years ago until you, you see now it's this big old deal. It's systemic. And these people don't want to help your, uh, your little ones. They're not serving you. They're serving themselves. And someone steps up to say, I'll, I'll pay the $22,000 in unpaid lunch bills. And this Joseph Mazur, president of the district, says no. Now, you know, when I saw that, and, and I, and then they turned around as Mazur says, I'm still going to hold this debt against these people. And I'm going to threaten to abduct their kids. That's a felony on multiple levels. Let me... Here's what, what happened to my mind when I read that someone offered, and maybe some of you listening who have done some research will already have anticipated this. And I put it in uh, the, the Twitter as a response. None, I don't get anybody come back with this stuff, so I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. I know what it's supposed to be. Whether or not other people want to acknowledge it or be found out for them not knowing or whatever, or don't want to give credit uh, to their own understanding of things or not want to say, yeah, that's right, how we're going to stop this elsewise. I said, my point is when someone made an offer of payment to discharge that debt and it was re denied, doesn't that pay the debt? Isn't that the payment that was tendered and denied ex discharge that debt? Uh, that's a rhetorical question, folks, because if you go to UCC, you're going to find out that it does. So I put it a, a, a Twitter. It says, how is the debt? in quotes, not discharged upon rejection of full payment tendered by Todd Carmichael and La Colombe Coffee. How is Joseph Mazur not committing multiple felonies to threaten kidnapping under color of authority? Where's his title to the, them, the kid, the little goats, uh, to trade them to strangers for debt? Now, I know I talk a little quick, but I hope you pick up a couple points here, folks. There's so much wrong with here as questions, even if I didn't know better. 
that you know them when you see them. This is the, the type of violations of the law that a system that's entrenched to harm people commits in the face of everyone over there, and no one says a, says boo about it. Did LaCollum by coffee get back in touch with me? Thanks for the idea, or no, thank you. No, that's not that's not the way it works here, or whatever. No, as a Todd Carmichael, who's the CEO, come back and tell me leave, go away uh, behind the woodshed. We don't need your kind. No, it, nothing. Crickets. And yet there's a code that says. Payment tender to, dis to pay for a debt discharges it upon refusal, on rejection. What is this, folks? Who's harming our kids now but us? We don't even assert the law that's there, even the basic code's there to protect us, which I've been asking everybody to start doing. I don't like having to, but I don't know what else is going to protect us from these people. You have someone that really has it out for, for people because of his sense that they're shirking a debt. I get all that part, but that's not enough to come abduct kids or threaten them or families or any of that stuff. These people are supposed to be helping your sons and daughters to be educated in the most innocent place. Yes, I know about all that other stuff. I'm not talking about that. That's a slightly different problem, but it all points to the same abuse, child abuse, doesn't it? They're willing to abduct the, 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 the future child, child slaves into this system over there in Philadelphia. Sicker than sick. And no one can use the most basic uniform commercial code to pay that debt off where it was a, a payment, a tender to payment was rejected. Even a CEO of a billion dollar coffee company? Are you kidding me? How pathetic are we as a people? And then it's no doubt why we see Philadelphia the way it is. So I guess I'm getting on Philadelphia a bit here, you people over there. Isn't that all? Was that the cracked bell there, too? Maybe that was it. Is that the same place? I, I don't even know anymore, folks. I'm becoming less and less caring about where things are. It seems like this big old massive, big old heap of, well, I just want, just a big old heap. A big, stenchy heap. No matter where I look, people are so helplessly and pathetically helpless to everything. And yet I, the, my first thought would seemingly answer the problem. Why hasn't it, folks? And if it did, why isn't there communication back? Not, oh, look what, okay, you, you, you offered the, the, the answer. No, to let other people know that's how that works and do what? Send the message to people, abusers like this Missouri guy. Resign. Get out. You don't have the right to do what you did. You don't have the right to threaten to abduct our kids, and we are demanding better. And we can do that everywhere. Why don't we do that for ourselves? To me, this is, again, we aren't an informed populace, and we, aren't, we don't care to inform or cause the information to be spread that would inform others. And I'm, again, going, I don't know more than what I read here, the quick little stories. But anyway, you know, you talk about the code, you talk about understanding you want to know the Constitution. Even the UCC, I've told you, I have problems with it, but it, it, if you go and read it and understand what it's supposed to do and put it in its place, it's very instructive. I've told you exactly how do you go use it for other things. In this case, very simple answer. And that CEO didn't respond with it. No, they're going to work it out. When that code was sitting there as a notice to this Missouri guy, and he tries to press it anyway, he's committing multiple felonies, should go to, should go to jail, because he's, a, he's threatening to abduct your sons and daughters. And I don't care that the school system's an indoctrination center at that point. That's not part of the list of things that are the harm. And so I, from, for your all's sake and what I think about, that doesn't make the list. I don't go off wax eloquent about my opinion about the school system. The black and white says the guy was on notice that he didn't have the right to do it, and if he did reject, that in, that uh, re eliminated the debt, and his next statement saying he was going to continue to put the pressure on those mothers and fathers out there that didn't pay for whatever reasons that they didn't pay was a felony. Multiple felonies, actually. I don't know why he wants his cash. 
I don't know why what 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 he thinks people are doing. I don't even know that uh, what people are t taking advantage of that he might be act this guy might actually be correct at some level that they shouldn't be. There's a different way to handle that. And I told you that if this is a debt and they were going to do it lawfully, they had to go to court and establish the debt. The debtor would have had the right to go through federal law and the debt, Federal Debt Collection Practices Act. That's why they don't do it, because they have to justify all this stuff. And uh, so, at any rate, they don't want to get a feet, a mucky feet for it. I get that, but that's not going the law just to use, uh, deny the law, at the other hand, and and threaten your uh, your little ones with them. Whatever, whatever. Put them in a pedophilia system. I'm phenomenal to me. And I, again, I don't know. It's not surprising why we have the kind of system that uh, that hurts people, and and the Epstein thing becomes something. Look at all the self, the lack of self uh, respect people have in systems like this as well. I don't. Know. It's, it's endless the psychological harm that's on us as well. But again, as I've told you, it's the bottom line. This guy's looked at this for whatever reason. He wants to teach people a lesson, but he didn't do it within the authority that is quickly noticed, if you understand, even the most basic UCC. But it is about that bottom line, and we see that. We know the system for what it is. It's a military occupation. Uh, one of the main things that sustains it is the bottom line. Yeah, It's just the bottom line. This is a commerce system that's taken over. And we know that it conforms everything into commerce. Trafficking is commerce, folks. When you're protecting the so-called elite, the highest placed decision makers, that's commerce still. It's still trafficking. You just aren't in a position where you've allowed yourself to get at them. And they've created the systems to block you out. Not to the low-hanging fruit and not to your sons and daughters. You don't care about protecting them. No, you'd rather ogle and goggle over the Epstein thing. And yet you turn around about the, what's going on in the uh, your, your sons and daughters and you think you're protecting them. And I'm suggesting to you there's a way to properly protect and none of us are doing it. And I, I say none of us, including myself, because I don't know where I've failed. We do so much well and right uh, that w that hasn't that whatever we're failing hasn't yet uh, come to task. So I, I figured that's something to know about, too. But Big Pharma admits measles outbreak and subsequent media hysteria made them massive profits. Now, you tie the fact simply that these measles outbreak and then the pro the propaganda to get your vaccines in a, with a product that the government has not safety tested will make an abuse upon your little ones. The response, the biological response of the body of the li of your son or daughter to that invasion is not tested and checked, is unknown. And they come out and they admit that they set this stuff up for the takedown for profit. And I haven't heard more coming out about this. It is a fascination to me at one level. It just brings me back to, again, the self-inflicted wound. No one wants to really hear about this stuff. No one wants to stay tuned in long enough to figure out how to protect themselves. Everyone wants to make an excuse how involved it all is. Well, that's the nature of the mafia that we're dealing with, the organized crime, it's pervasive. And you don't stop organized crime without uh, effort. Big Pharma admits to making money when the measles outbreak, and you found out a lot of those measles are caused by the vaccine. It's a self-perpetuating problem. Do, does many people, I'm certain uh, known behind the woodshed and the listeners behind the woodshed, You've probably understood some of this. Now, you don't understand the depth because I don't know many people that actually do, and I'm not even claiming that I do. I've seen enough that if you go to those documents and the proofs of things, that starts the process of being able to expose it. Not that you just know that study's there. As I've showed and point out to people, you have to take these studies in a particular way and through a particular process to start become effective with them. Very few will do that for sure. But Big Pharma admits the measles outbreak and subsequent medium hysteria made them massive profits. And so maybe we're looking again at the media being the domestic terrorists, because what they hyped was what? The conspiracy theory of anti-vaccination, didn't it? 
Now, I don't think that necessarily that what I'm saying today put together the way my mind says it can put together would be the answer. But I'm saying, I uh, believe, uh, at least, what I've told you today about how this works relative to who the real domestic terrorist is and how to develop the case for that, uh, in a short sentence, is, is a, big, a very big beginning uh, steps, foundation to make in order to start to turn this thing around. I keep telling you it's about the bottom line. I keep telling you they win coming, they got you coming and going, and they make a buck either way. I learned this about the legal system a long time ago. And I guess if you don't appreciate how this subtlety is, it's not part of the equation. And, and see, what I say, what I'm saying, and I'm saying, because I know that's part of the equation, what I do and the things I decide to do don't allow them to take on, the, on either direction either, on top of it all. And so we can be led by the nose, a ring in our nose, an accessory to the crime against us, or we can swim really fast uh, because we saw a light in the shadow above us, uh, we don't want to be eaten by the buzzard, uh, or whatever. We can flee from all these things, run to and fro, however we're told by the media, or we can sit back and say, no, okay, here's another proof. It's all about the bottom line. They got people coming and going, and they're making dollars, and the bottom line is my little one or myself or my family is at in harm's way. What am I going to do? Where am I going to set in to stop it? Now, if you're one of these next people, you probably don't care. You are what you see. Lowbrow TV lowers IQ, increases disinformation susceptibility. See, here we go back to the so-called conspiracy theorists. We, here comes a, a, an, a, an effect of a cause that's unidentifiable, which we could make a list for. And you say, well, I don't do TV. Because I don't either, folks. But we do have the Internet, and that's probably the lowest IQ. Low brow. The low, lowest brow is the Internet. Increases disinformation susceptibility. This is the what they're creating. This is the, the fertile ground in you they're creating. And I'm going to say it's, they want to point out this uh, TV. They didn't mention the Internet. They didn't information the technology around it. Remember, silent weapons of quiet wars. They don't in, even your society, the way it sets up, is a low, uh, a low brow condition. It's, it's, it, it doesn't rise above mediocre, folks, and we haven't driven it higher. And that is on us. It's that this propaganda is a terroristic tool. And the FBI just called it out. And I thought that was fascinating that you could reconstruct that admission by the government to point out in a short sentence is how you were going to go ahead and pull through your necessity authorities to correct the matter. And it, you at least at that point start pushing against that national security imperative, which is a lie. Thank you for being with me today behind the woodshed. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And uh, Jules over at UCY, uh, you simulcast and sound minds at YouTube. And you know, all you all that post after, thank you for all that and the downloads. And I'll remember, it's about the downloads. Give me a couple hours to get you the right right thing. I think I stayed on most of the, uh, all today. Uh, I, I didn't notice it go down. Didn't see any notices. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of making that change, folks. It's not going to happen on its own. I mean, really, it's just not going to happen. Uh, I hope you can uh, just jump in, pick something, and be the thing that doesn't exist. You're the unique part to this, each one of us. And don't don't be gullible. Look through it. Uh, don't disregard good things, though. That's the other thing. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
up a can of whoop-ass, feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 